Good morning. I'm getting ready to go. Getting ready to go up to Gallo Mountain. I'm not sure if that's gonna if I'm gonna be able to complete that mission. Um, we'll see what the train looks like when I get there, and then I'll jump over to Fox Mountain, uh, which is just across the highway from there. It's a uh, there's a lookout tower up there, so uh, should be fun going over to New Mexico today uh, to knock out a couple of eight pointers. I think they're both eight points. So yeah, I'm excited. So uh, let's get cracking. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summit's on the air. Okay, the thermometer says it's about 48 degrees this morning. Uh, about 615, 623 it says. So, uh, kind of nice to be up out and early. Seen any out for a lot of people. It's a three day weekend up here, so uh, it is uh, gonna be a little crazy in town. I'm gonna avoid all that. Oh, look at this guy's already setting up a couple of ways. Anyway, we just went through Apache Creek or, or past uh, reserve, so we're turned north. And in about 15 miles here, we'll be up the uh, more or less trail header road take that in so temperatures currently 57 outside so that's good news cooler the better for me I think it's gonna warm up today but if we can get this hike done I get up to the top and uh, then the other peak is a drive up so finding the road the turn off here was uh, pretty tough because it just blends in with everything else but uh, looks like I don't know if hopefully this gate isn't locked We'll open it and then close it behind us. All right, so we're on this Forest Service road. Let's see how far it'll take us in here. So far, it's in pretty good condition. Doesn't look like it's heavily used, but um, it's beautiful. Temperature is about 58 degrees. Slowly warming up. We're at about 8,000 feet right now, so that's uh, that's nice. So not too bad. Hmm. I reckon when this gets wet, that's going to be this would be kind of a bear to get through. But it's nice and dry right now. So we'll just take it easy going through here. But uh, we'll go as far as we can if you know hike isn't that far. But uh, it's a little bit more challenging here, but so far so good. Should be able to pick a light pickup in here, no problem. All right, starts getting a little sketch for my vehicle up there. You got to go way up onto the con on the left, and if I slid down into that ditch up here, I'd be high center, and that'd be game over. I think we're only about a I don't know, half mile short of where I was planning, maybe even less. But um, this was good enough for me. And uh, yeah, so we're parked right here, pulled up off the road. All wheel drive is nice, it kind of gripped, gripped in there and got me off. So we're gonna, we're gonna load up here and get going. We're probably at about, well, let's see what it says. According to the, Jeeps were at about uh, one eight thousand one hundred, so it's pretty up here. Temperature is absolutely perfect, and uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Okay, I'm loaded up, ready to roll. So uh, pretty little area here, pine, oak, and uh, we got a bushwhack. It's it's the place to do it. But uh, we'll see what the train's like. Hopefully we can get up there without a... Hopefully it's within my capability, I'll say. All right, forgot my hat. That was cool. Not. 
added about 0.3 onto this thing. But anyway, oh, it's really beautiful up here. Okay, I'm about 0.3 from the vehicle. Um, I think this may be, check my chart, but I think uh, we're at the charted uh, tank, which as you can see in the upper right hand side. And yeah, so this is the end of the road. So I wasn't that far from, from uh, where I was gonna have to stop anyway. Uh, if you got a Jeep, maybe you can, you know, you can do a little bit of crawling, but I don't know how much farther. Um, it's not made for my little all wheel drive city vehicle. But yeah, you could probably go up here a little bit farther if you got a Jeep. I, uh, I definitely don't want to tear something out, you know, because it's how far back do you got to walk? So, anywho, beautiful so far. Just gorgeous country in here. Hopefully it doesn't get too hot before I get to the top. So, just keep going. Yeah, there's some vehicle tracks up here. Looks like a little, those little uh, four wheelers though. Yeah, another thing, it's amazing. I don't know if I can get in the truth of consequences repeater, I haven't tried it, but I can still get into the Alpine one. They're all linked together, part of the ears network. So I was talking to a guy who was using the one up in Greens Peak. So, kind of a nice safety thing. And if you want to coordinate with buddies, you can do that too. It's a great little network. And uh, gonna have to send those guys a donation. A bit of good news. Um, this uh, Jeep trail continues on after the charted end there at that tank, which was dry. But uh, that's really good news. Be interesting to see how far this goes up. I'm gonna drop a waypoint there. But uh, it's awesome. I love the low light. Not as low as I'd like it, but as a tree rakes the forest from the east. Really pretty. Oh, New Mexico does love their fences. I had to open like three of these on the way in. I like the way they make them though. These guys don't screw around, they make them the last. All right, let's get going. Taking a quick break. This is looking back. Um, I'm still on the Jeep trail, which just takes all the guesswork out of it. And of course, it's uh, I can tell it's been cleared. Chainsaw marks through these fallen aspen and stuff. So, just makes it easier uh, hiking rather than bushwhacking. As you can see, it's uh, pretty crazy in there. So it'll be a lot of a more difficult bushwhack than just straight forest floor. And over here is gets pretty rugged. So we're going, this road goes right up the way I charted. Um, so let's get cracking. All right. I gotta tell you, I'm totally stoked. Um, Jeep trail all the way up so far to where the train starts to flatten out. I'm right here, look at the blue dot. Put that in the, put that right up there. Over there, I don't know. Um, so yeah, this is pretty awesome. Starting to flatten out, looks like it totally flattens out right up there. So I'm stoked. Um, mainly because, you know, I thought this was going to be a lot more difficult. Um, I was apprehensive about going up a, a gorge or a ravine or valley just because sometimes if it does contain running water from time to time, you'll get a ton of, you know, growth in there, making it really hard. But this has all been maintained. It's a G-trail 
absolutely stunning. Actually, about, looks like about 20 yards from me is a little post in the middle of the Jeep trail, probably marking the end. So, uh, totally awesome. I'm gonna take a quick break and then I'll get back to work. Just gorgeous up here, just A1. Much nicer country than I thought it'd be. I had forgotten that it was up at 8,000. Uh, the growth is, looks beautiful in here, no fire. All right, just a couple words while I take a quick break here. Really, really nice. So, um, how did I get up here? So, here's commercial time. Um, on my channel, there's a series called Soda 360. It's a complete 360 degree look at, um, look at summits on the air. Um, hence the word so, uh, Soda 360. The first one starts out about really explaining what the heck Soda is, why do it um, as an activator, which we are today, or as a chaser sitting at uh, home or maybe even on another peak. So um, then I move into the planning phase and I'll explain. So on this one, um, I did use all trails like I did in those videos, but I also used Gaia. I'm trying out Gaia again. Um, G-A-I-A GPS.com, I believe. I got both apps installed. I planned on both. Wanted to take another look at uh, that app. Um, their maps have changed a little bit. and been improved. I didn't like the way it was before. Um, so, yeah, I'll give it a try. So I did all the planning. I figured out how to get up here. Um, basically looking at the terrain, all the topo information I could possibly get. I turned on the um, satellite layer just to see if I could find any trails. Um, and then I uh, said, okay, this is how I drive in. I drove, I basically drew a route on both uh, charts, put a GPS coordinate in on the start from the highway, um, and then put, punched that into um, um, uh, Google, because that gives you nice routing through all the highways and stuff. So, and it was, it was dead on. I drove by it, almost drove by it a second time, because the, for this particular route, there's no marker. And it really blends in with, I mean, there's kind of grass and everything on it, so you just don't see it uh, unless you're really, really looking. So um, I looked at that. I looked at all the topo lines. And I said, okay, I can drive up to this point, and then there's nothing. I don't see any trails, but this looked like the easiest way. Um, so and then went up and have been coming up that uh, Jeep trail, which was, that is just totally awesome because it made this hike a lot easier. Um, sure, it was about as steep, wasn't quite as steep as I thought it was, was going to be looking at the topo charts. Um, but, you know, for, for me, it's, it's, it's just been a years of learning, looking at the topo and saying, okay, this is steep or not steep. Also looking at what is the total distance and uh, amount of elevation gain. That'll give me a sense also about how steep it's going to be. So nice and steep, but I was on a Jeep trail, so a pretty easy hike. And um, so... There you go. I'm not there yet. I'm just taking a quick break. Um, but I thought I'd stop and and uh, talk about that. The, the third video in the Soda 360 uh, series is uh, doing a reference activation. So just an example rec uh, activation using HF and uh, using HD as well. One of the, this guy. So um, you can think of today as a reference activation if you so desire. Uh, probably won't be using the HT, but amazingly, it can get into a repeater over in Alpine, Arizona. And that's probably like a good 60 miles away. And what's a little crazy to me is I am I was down at the car and able to get into it with my with my little HT here with 6 watts. So um, that's totally awesome. And it's really good to program. We'll talk, and it kind of leads me into safety. Program your HT into uh, for the local repeaters. Um, it just gives you one more avenue of communication if you break down in your vehicle or, you know, your boots break down for some reason. Um, so that's one way. Uh, certainly you have HF, and if you do have HF, you can um, maybe contact somebody in New Zealand <laughs> um, and give them your coordinates and ask for a, a dust off. Um, but the, the other thing for safety is is the number one thing you do, this is this is number one, certainly do a lot of planning. Um, you, you look at and make sure you're not going to be on private property, certainly. But planning the route up here, maybe planning an alternate. Sometimes I'll do that. I'll see two ways up and 
and then I'll wait till I get on scene to, to decide how I get here. Um, after you've done your planning, um, send those plans to a buddy. Tell them, tell them that you're where you're going the next day. And um, the nice thing about these charting applications, certainly all trails, um, is you can just text the person your chart. Um, they can bring it up on their phone, uh, on the web, and see exactly the way you're going to be going. So if you are overdue, um, Search and Rescue knows pretty much where to start. Um, so that's always a really good thing to do. Um, you've got I've got a uh, medical uh, patch kit, so if I you know, punch a hole in myself like last year, then I can patch it up and get back to the car. Um, so lots of water. Um, there is a list of things, or the 10 essentials, um, on my website. Um, if you go to hamninja.com slash safety, um, there's a whole article that I wrote and the things that I bring uh, on this. You'll probably look at that and you say, geez, that's a lot of stuff and it's packs too heavy, but you know, I bring extra water, I bring enough gear to where when I'm hiking by myself, if I do get hurt, twist an ankle, whatever simple thing, I can spend the night up here. So I do have a fleece in the back. Um, I have a puffy jacket that weighs practically nothing and then a shell uh, for when it rains. So if I put all those on, I'm good to go for the evening. Um, and you know, this wouldn't be a bad place to, to camp out, I tell you, it's beautiful. I bring a little bit of food. Um, the big thing is water, um, especially if it's gonna be hot. Uh, talk to KG6 Li about um, how much water you should bring. Um, he had a very interesting experience uh, running out of water. I've run out of water, and I tell you, I was, it was just pure misery. Um, so it's partially I bring extra water because it's a it's a comfort thing for me. And um, if I find somebody else on the trail that needs it, then I got a little bit of extra. So um, there you go. So there's my safety talk. Um, I'm going to get back on the trail here. We're probably, looks like we're leaving the trailhead. So one last uh, thought about that is, is if there are a lot of twists and turns, I'll print out a chart and bring it with me. Why? If I drop my cell phone, I'm done for. Um, so I need some charts. Uh, another thing I will do if I don't bring a chart is I'll basically, uh, I'll go up and then I'll take a bearing on to where the trail starts or where the car's parked. That way, if it breaks, I just whip out my compass and say, look, if I take a bearing of a, or a heading of 180, then voila, I can get back to the car or the trailhead or wherever I left. Um, I also look at the train. So this train's gonna be pretty easy because uh, it does kind of go into a ravine type situation. Um, so one last thing I do carry that you'll see on hamninja.com slash safety is uh, I carry one of these little um, Garmin uh, satellite communication units. It's an in-reach um, unit. They're totally cool. You can send SMS messages, receive messages, um, send messages to other guys with them when you don't have cell service because um, you don't up here. I mean, I, I have AT&T, so it pretty much sucks um, in, in Arizona and maybe New Mexico. But when you're in the backcountry, you won't. You're down in valleys and stuff, and you're just not going to have connection. So I've got that to communicate out. I've used it. It's a lot of fun. Um, I can also, for some that's on the air, I can uh, post a message on the spotting network and, and uh, get myself spotted as well. If I'm going to spot myself sideband, that's kind of handy. Um, so there's also that big red button, the, or big orange button, the bob, um, that you can press if you have an SOS. It squawks your, uh, all these messages go up to a satellite that are hauling ass over above us at about 2,000 miles uh, above the Earth and uh, cooking along. Or maybe 200. What is it? I think it's 200 for low Earth orbit. So, there you go. And I got my little break in, sitting in the shade, and uh, I hope this was useful for you. Um, some folks have told me that the Soda 360 has helped them get started. Certainly, if you're already doing something that's on the air, eh, probably not. Might be interesting to see how I do it. But, uh, uh, but if you're, if you're looking to get started um, as a chaser or an activator. Um, check it out. I've got I've got a video that's a deep dive into using all trails, a charting program that I use. Um, also a deep dive into chasing for those of you that want to chase. Um, so yeah, check it out. I'll be adding on to that. And uh, let's get back on the trail. Enough yakking. Let's get cracking. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you.
man this is this is just stunning in here uh just a great little hike i'm loving it so far a little bit of downhill here but uh <laughs> it's hilarious this this road is exactly how i uh charted without even knowing the road is here so um yeah this is awesome little saddle here and uh I think we're going to start back up the here and to the up the uh, mountain here. You have seen to see how far this thing goes. It's pretty cool. My charted path is diverging from this road here, so I am going to head up this way and um, I'll get a bearing to the road so I can get back to it. But the Terrain features are pretty, uh, pretty good pointer as well. Pretty awesome. Yeah, so this does come up here, kind of make a left, and it's cleared. Looks like it, it and uh, according to the chart and GPS, it's uh, it's directly at the the summit. Like we're probably we're getting close to the activation zone. So, not much more to go. Okay, just talking to Dale on uh, via the repeater. Uh, so you can get into the Alpine repeater from here. It's pretty awesome. Um, we're on the summit. And... Um, just perfect absolutely perfect i'm going to set up here and um bang out some cw um maybe do a little chasing but uh lots of shady spots to put my uh chair and i might just if i can set up on this uh on this log here i'll be uh i'll be totally gooch so um yeah nice views off here Oh, and let's see, let me give you an elevation. Uh, the current elevation, according to the Jeeps, is uh, 92.85. So we started about 8,000, and uh, we're 92, so about 1,000 foot climb, I guess. 82 to 92. Um, over 1,000 foot over two miles. Not bad. That's a, that's a, yeah, it's steep in that one area, but uh, shoot, totally doable when you're on that Jeep trail, so I'm totally stoked. Let's get cracking. All right, a little bit of sad news. The camera antenna is pooched. Um, can't get it to uh, tune up, and I think it's, uh, I put enough tension on the connector where it, it's come loose. Maybe a simple repair, but I'll have to talk to uh, the uh, soda whisperer about that. Anyway, so we switched off to the uh, LNR NFED, halfway wave NFED, and uh, actually even gave us a, the nice thing about this is you throw some uh, 174 coax on there and you can set up gives you more choices to set up um, my my operating position here is just <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that all right so I'm gonna set the camera up here and let's see if this thing works okay one way to to know if um, your antenna's working is is to tune in on the uh, FT8 frequency, so that will give you <laughs> a real good test because there's always something going on there pretty loud. Yep, there's Gary. 
Woohoo! Gotta get him! Thank you, Gary. There's Martha. One time. The summit, summit to summit. Kilo India Seven, Oscar Alpha Lima. CQ CQ, summit on the air. Kilo India Seven, Oscar Alpha Lima. Summit to summit. Summit to summit, summit to summit, summit to summit. I hear summit to summit, you're in the noise level, so you got to speak up for me. Roger, roger, November 1, Charlie Lima Charlie, November 1, Charlie Lima Charlie, summit to summit, over. November 1, Charlie Lima Charlie, is that correct? QSL, 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 um, all right. Well, the LNR antenna came to the rescue, uh, it's a pretty cool antenna. I mean, I, I really like it. Um, one of the things about it is I can get, because I have the coax on the end, you can see it goes from the radio up to this tree, and then the coax basically goes into the matching unit down there. Um, so, worked darn well. I got, um, um, looking at my log, I got 31 contacts, and six of those were summit to summit. So that's from out D is pretty cool because it tabulates all this shit for you. So uh, bagged, bagged quite a few. Oh, wait a minute. No, I didn't get this last guy. So yeah, 30, 31 and six. And it was a great time. The weather was absolutely perfect up here. So um, the only little kind of bump in the road was the, um, my uh, NFED, um, uh, my random, uh, random wire, my K6 ARK special. Looks like it needs to go to sick bay. So that's all right. I had a great time up here, and um, I'm gonna pack up, maybe grab a sandwich as I head down. I'll I'll eat my sandwich on the way down, and I'm gonna head over to a um, the lookout, which is just on the other side of the highway here. I can't see. I should be able to see the mountain. It's right over here, but um, we're in the trees. So very. I'm pretty stoked. Um, I don't know, I just, this is just awesome. Beautiful, beautiful weather. It's probably about uh, 68 degrees up here. Clouds are moving in, but I don't think it's gonna rain. I'll definitely get off here before it will, um, but I think it's just gonna threaten to rain. So I was using my MiFi unit here, which was great because it's a Verizon. It's Verizon service, I have AT&T. I got a super cheap service, but I don't care about, you know, how much data I need because I just get a little bit. So I'm pretty stoked about this and um, the whole thing kind of just came together. Navigation was awesome. I mean, I couldn't be coming up, coming up the road pretty much all the way. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here. And um, thanks for all the Summit to Summits and the chasing guys. I appreciate it. I'm going to shut down my little Wi-Fi, start shutting down the radio and unplugging. Booyah! Okay, that's the Alpine repeater you hear hissing in the background. Somebody just kerchunked the ears system. At any rate, um, I am packing up. I'm going to do one last check for gear. No gear left behind. Um, so, Ohana. And I'm going to check one thing because I'm using a different antenna today and I want to make sure I got it back in the pack. You ever have one of those feelings that you forgot to put something in the, in the pack? Well, yeah, I didn't want to leave something up there, especially my uh, LNR antenna because that's now my only uh, QRP antenna or, or my hiking antenna I've got with me. I do have my pack antenna, so that would work. But um, yeah, anyway. Um, everything's in the bag and we're on our way down. 
uh, super successful activation sideband um, CW the whole the whole shebang so let's go over to Fox Mountain okay desummiting is just as fun as going up and that's it. just locking up awesome hike loved it just heard a little bit of thunder off to the uh, west of me hopefully we can get that other peak in if we can't it's all right um i had an epic day so far uh next one's fox mountain uh before i go though i'm gonna bend this antenna back it's got a feature allows you to put it back that way when i go into that tree it won't knock it off good thing i had a mag mount because it wanted to tear the antenna off <sighs> gotta love it all right let's get out of here 73 guys nice little drive up to uh, <clears throat> Fox Mountain under uh, some cloudy skies a couple of drips of rain but uh, as long as there's not any lightning we can uh, go ahead and activate let's we'll see how this goes scattered clouds 72 degrees <clears throat> gotta love it All right. Small problemo. Can't drive all the way to the top. So, we're gonna do what we always do. Run a hike. So, no problem. We only have about a mile at most to go. So let's get cracking. Road closed. I reckon they don't want the public up at the lookout tower, but we're not going up there. Oh, so anyway, off we go. Oh, getting some really nice views here. A little breezy. Probably about 70 degrees now. Oh, it's nice. Your antenna's shocking you. You need to get off the off the mountain. So I'm gonna de-summit, let this thing blow through, and see if I can't uh, get on the air. Okay, got my gear covered up. I'm gonna wait for this rain to move through. Uh, just looks like one uh, one uh, you know maybe a couple cells. I'm off the summit, so I'm just gonna hang out here. And not be the highest thing. And, uh, a of so let's get down.
<laughs> Thanks, Steve. Well, I got pretty lucky on that. Um, I'm still in the activation zone here, about, I don't know, 25 feet below the tower there. And um, those storms moved to the west of me and they just kept moving uh, north. So that worked out pretty good. I uh, got on Slack because I did have a network up here via Verizon, certainly not AT&T, and uh, asked the guys if they could give me a, you know, I needed four quick contacts because I saw a window and uh, man, those guys just totally jumped on it. But um, what was even wilder was was just, I had a pileup to end all pileups. So I got 24 contacts. Um, yeah, just looking at the weather here. Actually, it was moving, it's moving to the west. Is it moving to the west? Yeah. So um, actually to the northwest. So it's coming out of the south, moving out of the northwest. But anyway, it's moving away from me. And, um, which meant two things. One, there's a window for me to get get an activation in up here, and it just got clearer and clearer and less, less and less. Um, I was expecting to get hammered as this stuff moved over me, but I uh, misjudged it. Um, but it was darn close. Um, and then when I was setting up my antenna and getting shocked, um, there was a lot of static in the air. So probably I, I decided to shut, you know, take the antenna back down, and then get off the summit and then wait, and um, so it all worked out. Came down here on the road a little bit and just set up, set the antenna kind of really got set up cool in the trees because I was able to whip it up on top over uh, two trees. So I had a nice uh, little dipole. I was using the uh, LNR antenna again, and uh, it's an LNR end fed. So uh, yeah, everything worked out well. I'm gonna start heading back down. Get on to my next uh, next deal. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna go. What am I gonna do else this weekend? These were perfect because they're right next to each other. Um, it is a five mile road to get up here to the lookout to Fox Mountain, but um, uh, it's a good double because Gallo was, you know, a nice little hike. And even though it's a two mile hike, it's pretty steep. So you take your time, I mean, figure what, it's an hour to get up there? And then I kind of kicked back in my chair and got a, just worked a, a very large pile up on 20 and 40. And then um, I, you know, worked on a bunch of summit to summits. Um, I tried to call George before he called me. That doesn't happen very often, George called me. So I got a summit to summit with George KXOR. And uh, so that was cool. And that was so funny. So there was a WG in there. And I couldn't get past WG because some other goofball just kept sending. And even though I'd say WG question mark, um, then somebody else would send. And it's like, so Steve was trying to get a uh, contact with me. That was cool. And uh, so thanks, Steve. Always good to hear from the goat. W goat. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's like, dude, every time you got just about G, and then the New Zealand contact, he, I'd get ZL2, and then he'd completely drop out. I wouldn't get anything else. And then, so I kept, you know, it took a lot of work. Um, but, you know, after about five attempts or so, we were able to close the contact. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I always love getting contacts from New Zealand. It's just cool. Uh, sitting up here on 10 watts on a wire. So, that always floats my boat. But uh, conditions were weird today. Um, the solar flux is pretty low. I mean, it best it's 70, it's been 69, 70. The other problem is we've had some good solar wind. Um, I didn't check this morning to see what the K index was, but um, had unstable conditions basically. So if we're having a bit of a high solar wind and stuff, it'll it'll make it unstable. But you know, I've read and read and read, and it's still hard for me to understand how the solar storms and K and A indexes combined with solar wind 
and solar flux, how that all, you know, impacts the um, radio propagation. I mean, I know in theory, but theory only goes so far in this uh, radio game. It's really a, you get to a certain point and then you have to set your antenna up and try it and see what it's like because theory doesn't always match. And of course, for, for summits on the air guys, every setup is different. Um, I have different antennas, different height off the ground, different ground around me, different water content. Um, the, the antenna today was, I mean, set up completely two different ways. It was a sloper in one, and then up here, I should have got that on video, that's pretty cool. I set it up on a pole through this tree and then just about to the matching unit or to the um yeah to the matching about halfway to the matching unit I got up on another tree so I kind of got a a nice uh wire up in the air. It's only about 15 feet. I didn't feel like lifting it too high and attracting too much attention from Mother Lightning. But the um hike from this from this uh closed road here is i don't know i don't even think it's a mile so it's a quick little hike up there so if you're coming up to fox mountain um to activate it yeah it's a pretty pretty good little um activation and if you can't you know do off the top then you can just drop down a little bit on the road there and get it done there's a bunch of vhf towers uh, up there so repeaters looks like and then not too far from here there's another summit with a bunch of towers actually i'll be looking at it here in just a second a whole bunch of microwave up there so hey the car's still there that's cool so yeah it looks like they're still building a tower might be able to see it through the trees but they got one tower and then the second one maybe it's still under construction nothing on it then there's a third one over there with some more microwave so Anyway, good activation. Wish I had gotten some more Summit to Summit, but say, Libby, I think I got one or two. A lot of things, so get my Summit to Summit logs going, man. Got to get that stat up. Perfect damn weather. I mean, I didn't even get poured on like I thought, just a little bit of rain. So, <laughs> look at the car. Just enough rain to make it look like total shit. That's funny. Uh, all right. Off I go. And before I do go, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, it helps the stats. It makes my ego bigger. I mean, let's let's just get serious. I mean, you send me stuff that you like it, you, and you know, you comment. The, the, the ego just gets bigger. I have to buy a new hat because my head gets bigger. We all know that. So. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. Uh, just a quick epilogue to this trip uh, up to Gallo Peak, uh, which is charted down here in the very lower part of the screen. Um, so during my planning, um, this is what I saw both on this chart and the uh, GAIA, uh, the Gaia GPS uh, application. And so I planned my attack basically using this road. And then I went up and I mentioned that I was surprised to see that road. I also brought up the satellite layer, zoomed in, uh, thought I could see some some other trails in here, which was always a good sign. So um, had I gone in and brought up the USGS topo, I would have actually seen that that road goes all the way up this little valley here and uh, wraps around and goes very close to the summit. The only thing that wasn't charted was a very old road that went uh, from this road up to the peak, but no big deal there. Um, so just a reminder, sometimes it's always good to check. Um, just bring up the uh, USGS chart real quick, maybe even download that offline. If it has additional information that all trails or uh, Gaia base vector-based maps don't show. The vector-based maps are much cleaner, uh, really great charts. Um, and they typically include everything that's on the USGS, but sometimes they don't. So it's always good to check. Um, they both have the USGS layer um, if you're a PAIN member, and um, Caltopo does as well. 
Caltopa showed the exact same thing. Obviously, they're all using the same charts. So um, just wanted to mention that uh, when you are planning your next trip out there, make sure you bring up the USGS base layer and make sure there isn't anything else in there that uh, isn't being shown. Okay, now we can roll the credits.